It's five o'clock Thursday morning. It's quiet as the grave out there. Not seen a single fish anywhere this morning. Looks pretty lifeless. A couple of little liners in the night on the rod on the end of the gap. That could have been anything moving through. Could have been bream or pike or carp or whatever. It last last night tonight, so just for a change I'm gonna do some walking today. There's gotta be a group of fish somewhere I can fish for. Well, that's got to be about as close to getting one on film without actually getting one. Possibly get. Makes any sense? Probably doesn't. It's literally just leveling the camera. And this rod would have really hit the alarm. It's not right now. It's such a sandwich take. This was the first one of the morning, after it all looking so dead, I managed to bag this 29 pound linear, I'd actually lost one about an hour before, um, unfortunately the sound didn't record on the video so I just need to do a bit of a voiceover with this one, but uh, he fought like an absolute demon, dragged me round and round that little bay to the right of where I was fishing, but we got him in the end, beautiful looking fish. Around and show you the other side. I really was ready to uh, pack up and get walking looking for the fish, and then they turned up in front of me. The one I lost was a decent fish as well. This was a blinding start to the day. afternoon, about half one, two o'clock, got scorching up by now and then completely out of the blue I had a little bite which at first I thought was a tench, but when I looked into it I thought it was a tench, it was just a little bit of knocking on the rod tip, um, but quite a lot of weight and then uh, sort of halfway in he started scrapping a little bit, sort of rolling around, buried himself in the weed bed for a little while, and just uh, extracting from that. And as he rolled up the front of the rod tip, so I could see not only it was a carp, but it was a great big one as well, a huge one in fact. Popped him up on the scales, 40 pounds, 12 ounces. Right result. My first Burfield 40 pounder. Totally happy with that. And that's it. Out the blue in the middle of the day as well. So he's just getting better and better. Even though I'm having a right result with the back of the swim, I've seen a lot of fish go through this channel. Um, and I haven't managed to get a bite in the front of the swim yet, so I'm being a bit greedy, I want to get them both working. There's a little island down there behind me, a channel up this near side. And wherever the fish go, whether they come in this way, go round that way, come out, they're all passing through the middle of that channel. They're not stopping, they're just drifting through. There's nothing there for them, it's just solid weed. But it's not deep, it's about four foot, I suppose, something like that. So I decided that if I could make myself a nice little clear spot, uh, maybe put a bit of pellet on it now, they might slow down and have a little feed there later. So, I made myself a castable swim rope. Sort of castable anyway. I'm supposed to screw on the end of a landing net poles for cutting reeds. But quite sharp, you know. But to be honest, I'm getting more weed tangled around the thread. Anyway, I've been out there for about three quarters of an hour I suppose, at about 50 casts and I think I've cleared a little spot. Only problem is the margins will probably be a bit deeper than I thought. To 
get to exactly where I want it to. I like to sort of push the boundaries a bit with the waders. I'll just come back to shore. I think I've overdone it a bit. So now everything's soaked. Hopefully I've got a little tiny clear spot. About that big. I'll even catch a car later. Good job I brought my lines in. Right, well this is the last night of my marathon session. Obviously well excited for the morning after having a, well three bites this morning, one lost, a 29 and a 40. So, um, I started off with one rod in this little back swim, I've now got two. I've actually shifted my house around there as well. Hey Padwell, you a good boy? So, poke my house in the trees there. Might as well look at the productive bit. And after my wader disaster, I've made myself a new set of waders out of an old set of chest waders using only a pair of sharp scissors. I don't know what they'd be like, but better than soaking wet waders anyway. And my third rod, I've kept on the end here. I've made a little track here. And there he is. Poking out there. What I've done, it's only shallow here. This is like the speedboat channel. I've waded him out about a rod length and a half. I've plopped him down there by hand so I can see him. And I've slack lined it onto the bottom and I've actually balanced the stone on the line right in front of the rod tip. I pinned it to the bottom of a little stone. So I won't be getting any liners on that one. Hopefully just a screamer. But it's looking lovely tonight. It's been a right sunny hot day. First proper hot day today. Just climb back out there. And I think tomorrow's gonna be well somebody just said 24 when I was at the shop. Which is incredibly warm. I would imagine they'll be up and about early doors in the morning. And I'll be waiting for them. I'm going to get up about half four, I think, as per normal, and get the kettle on, sit out there, and wait for the first one to rip off. Well, this morning it didn't happen like that. I mean, it was. It must have been. I can't actually remember. It was about half seven by the time the first one went. Which seems like a long time when you've been up since four. I'm just sort of writing it off when I got that first bite. But we shall see. Might even get one in the night. Never know. No reason why not. Spots are well baited. I've got loads out actually tonight. Right, we're going to have some dinner. Maybe a cheeky little beer to celebrate. I'll speak to you again in the morning. Well, it's just growing light on the last morning. Uh, been a bit of a hectic start, really. You can see the big old moon up there to the left and the reflection in the water. That's uh, what everyone's been raving about this week. Apparently perfect fishing conditions. Well, I can't argue with that. Woken up at four o'clock, well, I was woken up all night by line bites. I got up at three o'clock in the morning and took the bobbins off because I just had no sleep. Tightened the lines up. Um, just fish for, for screamers, really. And that's exactly what I got. Four o'clock this morning, a rod I'd put out there, a new spot I'd found yesterday. I 
put about a kilo and a half of bait over it to try and get it going and uh, it got going. Four o'clock this morning, that one ripped off. I got him in. Um, I could tell he wasn't a big one straight away. When I netted him, I reckon he was, I don't know, 22 pound-ish, something like that, but I never got to find out, really. Because um, while he was at my feet in the unhooking mat, rolled up in the net, um, the other rod ripped off. And I played that in, I got it halfway in, and then realised I didn't have a landing net. So I had to unceremoniously dump the first one back in the margins, reassemble the net under one arm while trying to stop the fish get through those boys. Um, and he was 32 pounds, he's just bobbing about down there, we'll take his photo in a minute. So a blinding start really. Blinding start to what looks like it's going to be a glorious day. Bear in mind I didn't have a run yesterday till up past seven. And I've had two by five o'clock in the morning. And that's oh, six fish I've had this week. Two in part one and four in part two. Perfect. I don't think it's over yet actually, to be honest. Fully expecting another one. I'm in debate whether to put more bait out there now, but I think it's bite time. I don't want to be smashing a spot on top of their head. I think we'll uh, settle for what we've got. It's looking nice through the other side, actually, off the front where my other rods are. I'll, uh, I'll take you through and show you. The sun's coming up over that side. Here we go, this is out the other side of the point. Looks proper carpet out there, doesn't it? If I can pan you around with my rather stuttery panning skills. Sun's going to be poking up over there in a minute, over the back of those trees. Entire lake's completely coated in white floss off of the trees it blows in. When the wind got up the other day, it looked like it was almost like it was snowing, there was so much of it coming through. You'd have a job to get a line in the water in this side without it floating up, to be honest. It's very buoyant, that white floss, it sticks to your line, and as you try and wipe it off, it puts like a wax coating on your line which turns a sinking line into a floating line. It's all looking good. I'll just go and sit next to the rods because I'm not expecting them to last out there very much longer. Five days on the bank, my longest session in decades. 
Uh, what a trip it turned out to be as well. Can't rumble at the result. Seven fish, two forties, three thirties, a couple of twenties. Who needs to go to France, eh? When you get results like that in this country. It's been fantastic. No, I've really enjoyed it. It's about the only lake I can think of that I could uh, actually last that long without getting bored. There's so many different things going on here, so many bays and big bits, small bits, open water fishing, you know, stalking and everything. Beautiful, love it. I could actually do another night, but I don't think the missus will handle it somehow. I think five nights is enough. Get home with a good soak in the bath, recharge the batteries. I'll be back down in three days. Excellent. Right, let's get going.